important match. I don't know if that's where they're going, but they certainly tease that's where they're going. But anyway, let's. Uh, why don't we start with the pay per view? Because of the three shows I watched, I believe that I enjoyed the pay per view the least. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's not close. All right. Well, let's go. All right. The pay per view opened with the uh, Survivor Series tag match. The Brothers Rhodes and Rey Mysterio and the Usos against the Shield and the Real Americans. There was a pre-match promo from Zeb here that I missed because I was in the bathroom. Actually, hold on a second. Before we even get to the bathroom, you were late. And and uh, it's like five minutes after you were supposed to be there and you weren't there yet. And Craig's like, should I start? And I said, I don't know. I don't know where he's at. And then and then he got a phone call. And he, yeah. he went into the kitchen and he's just he's quietly talking. Like, oh, yeah. well, I guess Craig always talks quietly. That's all Craig always talks that way. Yeah. Sure. But he's like, oh, really? Oh, okay. And I was like, Craig, what's up? Oh, hold on. And I'm, I thought, oh, God, is Vinny in like a terrible accent or something like that? And what happened was you got lost going to I Craig's. Got lost on the way to Craig's. Well, I have, there's uh, something of an excuse here. Uh, I was in Tacoma which is the opposite direction to get to Craig's house than I usually go. And so uh, trying to find the fastest way, I just put in the, uh, uh, the the closest business to his house I could think of was the Value Village out on River Road. So I plugged that in, into the thing. And I'm driving there, and I realize, oh, wait a minute, if I go all the way to this place, then I'm going to have to actually double back like a couple miles to get to Craig's house. There's got to be a faster way. So I attempted on my own, with no assistance to find a back road to Craig's house. <laughs> this was a stupid idea. It was, especially given that I uh, have a horrible sense of direction. Um, that being said, I actually came much, much closer than I, I, I uh, should have, honestly. Um, I was actually on the right street, but on the wrong side of the train tracks. I see. I know where you were. And then to get across the train tracks, I had to go like another half mile out of my way. So you were closer to the restaurants, coincidentally. Uh, which restaurants? All of them. All the restaurants are over there on the other side of the train tracks. I see. You were just going towards food. I guess I was. I guess I was. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Onwards. All right. So they uh, pinned Dean Ambrose in like two minutes. Cody pinned him with a schoolboy. And I'm, I'm sure that will come up, uh, that the fact that Dean will, uh, was out first, I'm sure that will be brought up on Raw as we progress through the storyline here. Wrestled around for a while. Goldust continues to uh, use new moves. He used the Code Red, which is a move by uh, Amazing Red. It's the, uh, basically a sunset flip into a powerbomb. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wrote that he was the tallest guy ever to hit this move. Then I remembered... Of all people, Trevor Murdoch tried to use it once or twice. Who maybe is close to as tall as Goldust, but Goldust looked much better. So Ray got a hot tag and ran wild. He looked fine once he got in there. No, I didn't notice him selling his knee or hurt uh, uh, one time. He didn't. He was on the match a lot. And finally, Cesaro hit one of the Usos with a giant swing. And the other one came in and tried to make a save, but Cesaro cut him off and put him in a giant swing too. And the crowd was going nuts for this. They love Cesaro. And so, of course, Cody came in and pinned him with a sunset flip. I made it five on three. I made five on two. I missed an illumination somewhere. There's a lot of sunset flips here in this. Uh... There, were, there were at least two men in this match eliminated with sunset flips. Oh, Swagger got pinned after a 6 one nine super kick and splash combo. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot going on, huh, folks. Just, uh, forgive me for missing stuff. So at this point, then that happened first. Then Cesaro got pinned. So now it's down to Rollins and Reigns against all five baby faces. So they took a minute to uh, collect their thoughts and plans and strategy. And Seth Rollins had the following strategy for Roman. This is a quote. Take him out. Take him out. Take them out. Yes. That was his plan. Mark Coleman's school of coaching. It was. And, and Although, if you think about it, it almost came true. Almost entirely. So the... Uh, Worked over the Usos for a while, then the other Usos got a hot tag, and he tried his top rope splash, but Reigns got the knees up, hit a spear, and pinned him to make it four on two. And Cody and Seth did some stuff, but Reigns tagged himself back in, and he speared Cody to eliminate him. Now it's three on two. 
Jay Uso, they said was the remaining Uso. Took, his, he, took uh, their word for it. Yeah, I'm sure. They're twins. So uh, he attacked Reigns on the floor. But then when they got back in the ring, Rollins tagged in and he pinned Jay with a jumping foot stomp. So now, very quickly, it was down to Rollins and, Re- and Reigns against Goldust and Ray. And I thought to myself, man, if these guys get a bunch of time, this would be an awesome, awesome tag team match. They didn't get a, they didn't get a ton of time, as it turned out. So uh, Rollins was in there with Ray. He tried a power bomb, but Ray rolled over the top and did a sunset flip and uh, eliminated him. So yes, that is two sunset flip eliminations in the same match. It is a Survivor Series. At that point, it was Goldust and Ray against Reigns. And uh, Goldust made a comeback, but when he tried his bulldog, Reigns shoved him off and then missed a clothesline and hit a spear for the win. So uh, then it's down to Ray and Reigns, and Ray immediately tried to 6 with 9 but he got speared. And so Roman Wayne Reigns was the sole survivor, and he personally was responsible for four of the eliminations with his spear. Why? Um, are it? you still there? <laughs> what was that? The cats are running around the living room. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, the cats are running around the living room, and they yanked the microphone cord out of my computer. <laughs> These cats are going to get it. Why yeah, is... I... <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. You need to listen back to that point in the show, Vinny. It is I'm the, sure uh, that would be awesome. Nine minute and 40 second mark. Go back and, and listen. <laughs> cats taking the radio show apart. Even my cats have never done that. Well, that's because you have a room where you can close the door. Why, uh, why do we never see the other Uso on Total Divas? Besides the fact that he's really smart. <laughs> I don't have an answer to that question. We have not watched Total Divas yet, everybody. Maybe you're gonna, he was on this one. Yeah, you're going to get your Total Divas review on, on Tuesday. But I yeah. was... I was alerted that it would be in our best interests, and I guess this would go for any of you that have not watched Total Divas yet, that when Ariane goes into the doctor's office, fast forward five minutes. That is what I was told. I see. Yeah, I I may have to do that. But anyway, obviously this was, uh, the idea here was to make Roman Reigns into a big star. I know a lot of people when this was going on were like, oh my god, uh, four on two advantage baby faces. Terrible psychology. Actually, the idea was you, they were creating a baby face out of Roman Reigns. It was yeah. not a, a full fledged turn yet, but the idea was he overcame all the odds and he was the sole survivor. And obviously, it got a huge baby face pop when he ended up yeah. spearing Ray. And it was an awesome spot. And then at the very end, he uh, he gave respect to Rey Mysterio. So I. Don't know what's going to happen with Reigns. I know, obviously, he's he's turning. I I had heard a few weeks ago that it might happen before the end of the year, and uh, and then I heard tonight that they may do an even slower burn, and he may get that spot in the Royal Rumble where he eliminates like ten guys before getting tossed out, and and what they want to do the idea. Is is recreate when Batista split from Evolution and make him into a big time babyface star. So that obviously is the idea with Roman Reigns. If you couldn't figure it out just from watching the match, but he did a great job. If you go back to, uh, I guess it would have been 2004, 2005, whenever it was that uh, Batista broke free from Evolution. In the eight to twelve months up to that point, there were lots of babyface moments for Big Dave. Mm-hmm. And he, but he didn't. He was not a babyface until the big turn. So that's right. They're doing this the right way. This was not the best Survivor Series match I ever saw, but it was a complete success. And in hindsight, it was clearly the best match in the show. Hunter and Steph and Kane had a meeting with Orton. They were not happy with him. He was not happy with them. Biggie Langston wrestled Curtis Axel. They had a raw match on pay per view. The highlight was uh, <laughs> Biggie had Axel face down, and he went to hit the big splash. And this all sounds like a very routine spot, but somehow in this big splash, Biggie managed to drive Axel's face several inches in the mat. So of all the moves that were, were this like a shoot, it was the shoot big splash. It was brutal. So Biggie hit him with the big ending and won. Nobody cared. And then he cut a promo saying he was not going to pander to the Boston crowd. And then he compared himself to the Boston Red Sox winning the World Series and they all cheered. What so a that, lame babyface promo that was. 
It was a lame babyface promo that was probably the most successful part of this segment. And it's the only pro- that's the only time they cared about him. AJ was backstage with the other girls and her team. Gave him the pep talk about eliminating the Total Divas crew. They said they didn't like her. This went on for a long time. We were too busy discussing Brian's claim that you look like CM Punk. I was I I I was I was just I was befuddled. You you you, you got the same haircut these days, the two of you. You don't no, have any sideburns. Not at me. all. <laughs> he has he has his hair is much longer than mine, and he has mutton chops, and yeah. I've slept recently. You do sleep. I have no idea. The only thing I had in common with with CM Punk was that I was wearing a Gracie uh, Jiu Jitsu hoodie. See, there you go. And I've been doing Gracie Jiu Jitsu since 2005. So. Anyway. Then it was time for the girls match. Oh, yes. (laughs) I sounded like too much of a pervert when I said that. I didn't mean I didn't mean it to come out like it came out right there. Can we just restart the show? No. Oh, if you want Christ. to, I'm not going over no. what I've already done. No, yeah. go. There were just way too many drops in a 10 second period. Much like this match, actually. All I really want to say about this, it went 10 minutes. 11. Almost yeah, 12. I stand corrected. <laughs> it started at 30 after and ended at 42 after. So give or take a few minutes here or there. Yeah. But you know the, how the time ref- goes. Let, let's say 12. For the sake of our argument, we'll say 12. There were 13 eliminations in those 12 minutes. <laughs> and not like a big, none of them were like a big, giant four-person DQ either. There were 13 pinfalls and or submissions. I don't feel the need to go over all this detail. All I will say is that the best part of this match, believe it or not, was when Tamina was in there with JoJo. I am not making this up. The tiniest woman in the world, the biggest woman on the roster. It was like Ray versus Kali in reverse because the uh, big wrestler was the more skilled one. And what followed was completely acceptable wrestling. And Tamina went for a Samoan drop, but it, JoJo rolled her up for a near fall. And then Tamina cut her off and it actually hit the Samoan drop and tagged in AJ who got the pin. And that was the end of poor JoJo. But she was standing on the apron the entire time. But up to this point, JoJo was. And she's like resting her chin on the top rope because that's how tall she is. And at one point towards the end, there's like her and Italia and I think one of the Bellas in the ring. And uh, Tamina's working over the Bella and while in the process, she runs over to the corner and hit Natalia who was flying off the apron. And Gojo just looks at her. No other idea how to react. So it was the best of times for Jojo and the worst of times for Jojo in this one match. And eventually Natalia topped out, topped out AJ with a sharpshooter. So Natalia was the survivor and that was that. It was a spectacle. You know, I predicted on Wrestling Observer Live that this would be the worst Survivor Series match of all time. And maybe it was, actually. I'm, I'm not going to go back and check, but I, I did have a couple of people tweet and email me that, I think it was, uh, was it Lawler and the Knights or something like that? That may have been worse. I, I can't even remember how bad that match was. But, um, I mean, they got rid of the girls that were really horrible fast. Didn't I think I believe the thing of Lawler and his mini kings versus Doink and his clowns. I see that might have been it. That might have been that, it. Regardless, that, right, regardless, they they got rid of the terrible girls as quickly as humanly possible, and the last few minutes were all right. So at the end of the day, uh, to be completely fair, this was better than I expected. It was still the worst match on the show, although the main event <laughs> close close runner up. But uh, yeah, there was some stuff. JoJo looked all right. You know, they didn't let her do much, but the little she did, she looked all right. Uh, God bless a Rosa Mendez. Uh, both Hispanic, you know. She's a sister in some ways. But uh, she's terrible at everything that she does in her job. The acting that she was involved in in the segment leading up to this was beyond horrific. The actual wrestling action was beyond horrific. The funniest thing about this match actually had nothing to do with the match. And it was uh, later on, Cole had to do a public apology because he had claimed that Natalia was the sole survivor and he accidentally screwed up and did not mention that Nikki Bella, John Cena's girlfriend, had also survived. So, Is that right? Yes, yeah, she had survived. She was not Rosa. actually eliminated. 
Nikki Pin Summer, Nikki Pin Oksana. Wait, oh, by the way, that's one thing. Nikki Pin Oksana with the shock treatment. Mm-hmm. She's been watching her Abyss tapes. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, this was, uh, I've seen worse. You are correct. I guess Nikki never was eliminated. Yeah. This is not so, one, but, don't buy the pay-per-view just to see this match. It's not that big a train wreck, everybody. So I must say that I, also, I must also stand corrected. There were only 12 eliminations in this match. Oh, John Cena is going to be mad at you, Vinny. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna get it. I guess he will. Okay. Um, the le- they went up to the Legends panel for a bit. And uh, it was Booker T in an amazing outfit that included a scarf indoors and his hair in a bun. Bret Hart looking as dapper as Bret Hart can be. And Mick Foley, who I believe has lost a ton of weight. And I mean that literally. I believe he has lost 2,000 pounds of body weight. He's skinny. And what a suit. And he had a suit and a beard. Ryback came out talking smack to them from the stage. He said he was issuing an open challenge. To anyone, he talked about bullies, how he didn't like bullies. And one guy screamed out, incognito. I laughed. Oh, by the way, did we mention? Uh, did we mention the the uh, in the in the initial elimination match when uh, somebody mentioned that uh, somebody was about to be jobbed out? <laughs> yes, Speaking Roman of- Reigns. Roman Reigns told Rey Mysterio as he's beating up in the corner, "You did all that work to come back just to get jobbed out." <laughs> that was awesome, and it turned out it was true. <laughs> you may get in trouble for that, but it was funny. So uh, Mark Henry came out to answer Ryback's challenge. He has also lost weight, although not a ton of weight like McFoley. And, of course, he has shaved his head. So uh, they had a mean guy match where they were like, hit a big club on forearm or throw each other around and they stand there and growl and snarl for a while. I prefer a big neck match. A big neck match? Yes. Well, they certainly do have big necks. Big necks, big that. checks, Vince. You know it. Of course I do. So, uh, they're like, uh, Ryback's working him over and he's going for the meat hook, which is his clothesline where he goes running out of the corner and Mark Henry's getting to his feet in the other corner and, uh, Ryback goes charging across the ring and then Henry advanced towards him and hit what they claimed was a cross body. It was a cross body. It was. His body it crossed was. Ryback's. It was only usually when you think about this move, the, uh, person delivering the move jumps in the air and then they fall down together and what happened was Henry jumped and he collided with Ryback and Ryback went down but Henry was still in the air and then he fell down on top of him so it was like a jumping torso attack sure a very effective one at that then he hit the world's strongest slam and pinned him what did you oh go ahead Ryback has the best losing streak gimmick ever. It is amazing. It is amazing. You know, somebody said, uh, uh, clearly your prediction of of uh, Ryback and Brock Lesnar for the Royal Rumble is off. I don't know, actually. It does um, that way. R- Ryback, I don't know if Ryback got in trouble before or after uh, that uh, that story had come out or had been told to me. So uh, it may that, that may still be their idea. Uh, he, he did issue an open challenge. I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if he's going to be issuing an open challenge and just lose to one guy after another until finally Brock shows up to beat him worse than anybody. <laughs> That'd be a hell of a storyline, actually. <laughs> but, um, yeah. What do you think of, of Mr. Henry's bald head? He looks much younger. That's what I thought. Uh, but that being said, I kind of liked the, 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 the balding cornrows because it looked, like what, it looked like what happened was his head had gotten too big for his hair. <laughs> so, is that what happened? That's what it looked like to me. I I did like his his uh, he 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 had a corn he had a corn over, is what yeah, he had yeah. a corn over, yes. And I I kind of really liked it, but he does now that he's lost weight and shaved his head. He looks I, I swear to God he looks ten years younger. He does. And uh, yeah, I I uh, I love Mark Henry. So two thumbs up. And this losing streak is is beyond hilarious. It is. It is. I like your idea that uh, Brock needs to come back and just. He needs to come back and retire him. Though. That, that, uh, either Brock or Goldberg. Either one works, actually. But uh, yes, it's the only way this can pay off. Oh, okay. The main events all have the same pattern. 
They were really boring for a while. They were exciting for two minutes, and there was a finish. I think we can move on to the next show. I was going to say, let's let's move on. We may as well, so, really. I mean, we'll I'll, re- I'll I'll recap this whole thing with Dave. But go ahead. Let's actually. There was a Wyatt's Daniel Bryan Punk match in the meantime. But we'll that, start with Del Rio and was, Cino. Cino the tag match. It was better than the, than the two singles matches, but it was still it was a match for a long time, and they got good to the end, and then it ended, and that was it. I am going to uh, if you'll bear with me here. Uh, read the first part of my notes in this match just verbatim. This is a little wordy, but. A lot of headlocks early. Del Rio has a better headlock than Cena, in case you were wondering. Del Rio went up top and came off with some sort of move. Then he punched him in the head some, then hit another unidentifiable top rope move. This was not his best night. Either guy is actually. Cena took a horrible bump into the corner, as he is wont to do. Del Rio had to jump off the middle rope to kick, kick Cena in the elbow. Is this what this show has come to? We're just reading your notes verbatim. I'm hating this so far. I don't think I'm alone. You know, let's be fair. It wasn't that bad. No. But here's here's the deal with this show, everybody. And and Lance Lance made a great point. He said, I don't have this verbatim, but he, he sent this to me earlier. He said, if the idea is that the reason you pay for the network is to get all of the B shows for free... Shouldn't the idea be to make the B-shows good? And he's correct. What was this show, everybody? What this show was, was raw, without commercials, and a lot of matches given more time. There were a couple of matches that were special and exclusive to Survivor Series. I don't think you would see this this uh, Divas, non-Divas, and the, uh, and the Usos, Rhodes, Ray, Shield, Americans. Those elimination matches are not normal for Raw. But... Big E and Axel, raw match. Ryback and Mark Henry, raw match. Del Rio and Cena, raw main event. Wyatt's Brian and Punk, raw match. Orton and Show, raw match. What'd they get? A little more time? But they're all matches you'd see on Raw. Last Monday's Raw, the main event was great. Was any match on this show as good as the main event of Raw last week? Maybe this, this, uh, uh, the first elimination match. No. But I don't think so. I think the Raw match was better. So, yeah, what the hell are we paying for on this network? Hopefully not this kind of show. So, they wrestled around a bit. Just get to the finish. Nobody cares. It's a Raw match. Yeah, Cena, hit it. Cena won with the AA. Last yes. five minutes were good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just bumping through this, everybody. If you want a full report of the last few matches, you can listen to the Observer show with Dave. But come on now. N- not a lot happened. Go on, no. Vinny. We had a wacky segment plugging the toys with Truth and Santino and Fandango and John Laurinaitis. Yes, John Laurinaitis. I think the people were singing Fandango's song here, and that was one of the two or three biggest pops of the entire show. Punk and Brian versus the Wyatt family. Good match, but raw. It was good, but it was also uneventful. Yeah, it was. It was, it was a good raw main event. Four guys we've seen wrestle a bunch doing the same stuff we've seen them do before. The announcers were bored. They talked about Florida Georgia Lion, for Christ's sake. Last two, three minutes were really good. I was also, there was also a great point here. Was I, I don't know exactly what Cole said, but I know JBL scolded him and told him to stop using pronouns. Because that's one of uh, man's pet peeves, you know. Ah, that's right, yes. Yes. So... They got the heat on Brian, and Harper hits a half Nelson suplex, which is a move you never see in WWE. And then he goes running across the ring to take out Punk, so can't, so can't, so Punk can't break up the pin that's about to happen. But when he gets to the corner, oh Jesus! I told you I was tired. When he gets to the corner, Punk drops him with a high kick from the apron to the head, and then Punk got the hot tag and ran wild. And it broke down to a four-way <laughs> show. Nothing like a show where Vinny is, is so bored that he's he's practically falling asleep. <laughs> Brian hit the knee strike on Rowan. Punk hit the go sleep on Harper. And then he pinned him. And then Bray teased fighting the baby faces, and he backed down. 
Listen, it everybody. It was a good match. This is not an issue of Vinny and I not liking pro wrestling, okay? I, I enjoyed Impact, and I enjoyed NXT. This show was not enjoyable to me. This match was not bad. This was, this was a fine pay-per-view match. But when I look at the show, when I look at what I'm, I'm promised for Survivor Series, I guess I really wasn't promised much, but it's supposed to be a big four show. When I look at that, I kind of get a little bit angry, you know? Like, man, I wasted three hours of my life, and this is what I got out of it, especially this main event. Let me recap this main event. This main event sucked. It was Randy Orton and the big show. It actually wasn't bad early. Randy Orton bumped all over the place for the big guy, and then he cut him off, and he put on a sleeper, at which point everybody chanted boring. They chanted Daniel Bryan. He tried a draping DDT, and Big Show screwed it up, and everybody booed him. I mean, just nothing to this. And then the ref took a bump. We had some brawling in the crowd. Big Show hit the knockout punch. He throws Randy Orton into the ring, and then out come Hunter, Stephanie, and Kane. The big giant, the big dummy... What 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 did what did, what have they called the big show in the past? You you big giant dummy or something like that? Big fat was, dummy. Uh, that's what Bret Hart called Sid, but it applies here. Big fat dummy. This big fat dummy gets distracted by this music, and and he gets uh, he gets RKO'd, and then a, an, a punt that misses by six miles, and he gets pinned. So again, I've seen worse, but this was the main event of the 2013 Survivor Series. Pay-per-view. Infuriating. And, and, this will make you guys happy. I just received word. Breaking news here on this program, everybody. It appears that this tease of John Cena and Randy Orton is not, in fact, leading to a unification match anytime soon. So the one thing you got on the show that seemed like it was something new ain't gonna happen. Did you just say that Randy Orton versus John Cena seemed new. Well, the idea that they're going to have a unification champion for champion match. I see. Going from two titles to one would, in fact, be new. I just looked at this man and thought, I can't believe they are teasing me with another pay-per-view match between John Cena and Randy Orton. Oh, hey, they may do it at TLC. It just won't be title for title. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing about this is that uh, the announcers are going crazy as both men held their, held their belts up and stared at each other. Michael Cole was talking about how only one of these men can be the face of the WWE. Because, you see, it's more important to be a marketing icon than it is to be a champion. Well, you could also argue that if this were real, if only one man can be the face of your company, why do you have two goddamn belts? I don't know. <laughs> Guess what, everybody? Thumbs down! <laughs> this was a thumbs, thumbs down, down. show. Yeah. The show